Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how the heart rate is controlled in humans. This includes the roles of chemoreceptors, baryl receptors and hormones. OK, in a previous topic, we looked at the structure and function of the human heart. I'm showing you a diagram of the human heart here. We saw that the heartbeat is initiated from within the heart itself. In other words, the heart does not require an external signal in order to beat. And because the heart triggers its own beat, scientists say that the heart muscle is myogenic. The heartbeat is initiated by a group of specialised cells within the wall of the right atrium. This is called the sinoatrial node, which is also called the pacemaker. Cells in the sinoatrial node depolarise, triggering the heart muscle to contract. And under resting conditions, the human heart beats around 70 times per minute. So as we've seen, the heart does not require an external signal in order to beat. However, the rate that the heart beats can vary depending on the conditions. This is an involuntary process and is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Now we looked at the autonomic nervous system when we looked at how the nervous system is organised. So if you haven't watched the video on the organisation of the nervous system, then I'd recommend that you watch it. We saw that the autonomic nervous system has two parts. The sympathetic nervous system often causes target organs to increase in activity. For example, during exercise or stressful events, the sympathetic nervous system triggers the heart rate to increase. This increases the supply of blood to muscles. The extra oxygen delivered is then used in respiration to release energy for muscle contraction. In contrast, the parasympathetic nervous system causes target organs to become less active. For example, during rest, the parasympathetic nervous system triggers the heart rate to decrease. OK, so let's look at how the autonomic nervous system controls the heart rate. The first idea you need to understand is that the heart rate is controlled by the medulla oblongata in the brain. In the medulla oblongata, we find two centres. One centre increases the heart rate via the sympathetic nervous system. This centre sends impulses to the sinoatrial node via the accelerator nerve. The other centre decreases the heart rate via the parasympathetic nervous system. This centre sends impulses via the vagus nerve. And both the accelerator nerve and the vagus nerve are motor neurons. Now, whether the heart rate increases or decreases depends on both the blood pressure and the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood. These two parameters are monitored by receptors which are found in blood vessels. And these receptors send information to the medulla oblongata. So let's look at how these two parameters are monitored. The concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood is monitored by receptors called chemoreceptors. We find chemoreceptors in the aorta and also in the carotid arteries which deliver blood to the brain. Chemoreceptors are also found in the medulla oblongata. Now, rather than directly monitoring the concentration of carbon dioxide, chemoreceptors actually monitor the pH of the blood. Carbon dioxide dissolves in water in the blood, forming carbonic acid. So if the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood increases, more carbonic acid is formed, and this causes the pH of the blood to decrease. Imagine that a person is undertaking exercise. Aerobic respiration produces carbon dioxide so the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood increases. This causes the pH of the blood to decrease, which is detected by chemoreceptors. Now the chemoreceptors in the aorta and carotid arteries send an increased frequency of impulses to the heart rate increase centre in the medulla oblongata. The heart rate increase centre now sends a greater frequency of nerve impulses to the sinoatrial node of the heart via the accelerator nerve. This causes the heart rate to increase. Now, the increased rate of blood flow causes more carbon dioxide to leave the blood in the lungs, and this returns the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood back to the normal range. The pH of the blood now increases, and this is detected by chemoreceptors. The chemoreceptors in the aorta and carotid arteries now decrease the frequency of nerve impulses to the heart rate increase centre. This, in turn, now sends a decreased frequency of impulses to the sinoatrial node, and this returns the heart rate back to its normal range. OK, now the heart rate is also affected by blood pressure. If the blood pressure changes, then this is detected by baroreceptors, 
and we find bearer receptors in the walls of the aorta and carotid arteries. Imagine that the blood pressure has increased. Bearer receptors detect this increase and send impulses to the heart rate decrease center in the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata now sends impulses via parasympathetic neurons to the sinoatrial node. This decreases the heart rate, causing blood pressure to fall back to the normal range. Now, if the blood pressure decreases, then again this is detected by bearer receptors. In this case, the bearer receptor set impulses to the heart rate increase center in the medulla oblongata. Now, the medulla oblongata sends impulses via sympathetic neurons to the sinoatrial node. The heart rate increases, causing blood pressure to increase back to normal. Okay, now we saw in previous videos that hormones can also affect the heart rate. Under stressful conditions, the adrenal glands release the hormones adrenaline and noradrenaline into the bloodstream. Both of these hormones act on the sinoatrial node, causing it to increase the rate that the heart beats. Now this plays an important role in the fight or flight response. By increasing the blood flow to muscles, more oxygen is provided for muscle contraction. This helps us to either fight or escape from danger. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe how the heart rate is controlled.